Hi, this is Nick Parker on the Monitor Observability team, and I'm going to do a quick, um, relatively unscripted demo of just the current state of tracing um, in OpsTrace. Um, so tracing itself is a relatively recently added feature, um, and it's still kind of in the proof of concept stages, but I figured it's still, it's at a point now where like we can probably do a quick demo and show you like what works uh, and what's, what's left to do. Um, so I figured I'd start it off with kind of this diagram showing how things flow. Um, the, the main thing, th this looks way more complicated than it is. The main thing to get from this is that you can have multiple tenants in ops trace. Um, that's already a thing. Um, and against each of those tenants, you can send traces in. Um, the traces uh, then get stored, and then you can get them back uh, by going to a UI. Um, so the idea here is that some uh, end, end user uh, would send, uh, probably using the open telemetry collector, which is kind of like a, you can think of it as like a Swiss army knife agent for uh, managing uh, traces. Um, it would send data to an authenticated endpoint using the OTLP uh, span format. Um, and then that endpoint, what it does first is obviously check the authentication header, but assuming that passes, it will then re uh, take that data and internally convert it to a Jaeger format so that an internal uh, Jaeger uh, pod um, will accept it. Uh, the the Jaeger instance then uses this ClickHouse storage adapter to then uh, store the data into a cross-tenant uh, shared uh, ClickHouse instance where each of the tenants gets its own database within that instance. Um, so that, at that point, the data is basically stored, the, the, the traces are being uh, streamed in uh, through the system into ClickHouse, and then an end user, uh, when they want to look at something, um, they would go to the Jaeger UI, which is literally just a stock uh, Jaeger uh, interface um, and uh, view it for the tenant that they're interested in. Um, so uh, this is sort of the state of the system at this point. You can get data in and you can see the data coming out. Um, and we nowadays have uh, uh, regular CI runs against all merge requests as well as periodically against the main branch uh, that check that you can get data uh, stored into the system and then query it back out uh, via the Jaeger uh, API. And uh, so we've basically been running it long enough that it looks like things in, a, in their current MVP state are, uh, are relatively stable. Um, if we look at the uh, system tenant on this example ops trace instance that I've got up and running, um, so I'm at the system tenant and then the, the cluster domain and then slash Jaeger, um, we can see we've just got a stock Jaeger UI with a little bit of customization over here with some links uh, related to ops trace itself. Um, but otherwise, uh, this is just the, anyone who's used Jaeger has probably seen this before. Um, in this instance, in the system instance, we can see we've already got some internal ops trace components sending traces into this. Um, it, at the moment, it's just the Cortex uh, uh, metrics management system that OpsTrace uses internally for metrics, uh, as well as the Jaeger operator, which is deploying all the per-tenant Jaeger instances, as well as a, a kind of Jaeger self-reporting on itself uh, for this Jaeger query one. That one's basically on by default, so that one's we're, we're getting that for free. Um, but, uh, so for example, with the Cortex traces, I can hit find, and then I see a bunch of... Uh, uh, cortex uh, spans or traces for storing data into the system. So you can see distributors are accepting data and then picking an ingester, and then the ingester is actually storing it into, uh, I guess, locally. Um, and then uh, if we go into like the Jaeger operator and then query for spans against there, um, we can see uh, it technically has some errors. Um, uh, if we go and look at one of those, we can see, here we go, it's complaining about no matches for kind ingress and version networking Kate's uh, IO v1. That's okay, that's kind of expected. It's a side effect of uh, uh, deprecated um, uh, ingress versions between uh, different versions of Kubernetes. So that's, that's expected for the record, but you can kind of see that like we can very quickly diagnose problems in the ops trace instance itself. Um, for the other half of this demo, um, I guess we can look at uh, like, tr so we've, we've looked at for some examples of the system tenant getting data basically from the system itself and a snake eating own tail for, uh, form, but let's try actually sending in some data from the outside. Um, 
so I did a quick look around for options uh, for things that would generate some realistic uh, tracing data. And it turns out that you can actually configure a Kubernetes cluster um, to send traces uh, as of uh, version 1.2.2 or newer. Um, so I'm not going to show you how to do all this in the video, but long story short is you need to go to your API server um, and enable some things and configure some things and basically point your API server to an open telemetry collector. Um, so I have a, a, a Kubernetes cluster that's just running in my house here. And so I've configured the uh, API server on the Raspberry Pi to send uh, metrics, or sorry, send traces, I should say, to an open telemetry collector. Um, and this is the definition of what that collector uh, is running. So you can see the, uh, to be clear, the open telemetry collector is just a third party um, uh, stock uh, agent that you can run. Um, and we're just configuring it with A, the uh, auth token, um, and B, the endpoint where the tenant, where the uh, tenant uh, tracing endpoint is located, where the, where the traces should actually be sent. Um, and once we've got those two things, we can check up on our pod here and see, yeah, it's basically sending some spans every five seconds or so. Um, and then if we go, whoops, I didn't mean to click on that, wherever that's going, let's go back. Um, if we go into the default uh, tenant here, I can just go back to the root. We can see here we've got API server, which is the, the traces coming from my open telemetry collector pod here in the house, getting sent to this remote ops trace instance. Um, and then we've also got Jaeger query, which is, again, just Jaeger by default um, reporting on itself. Um, so if I do a quick find traces, it comes back very quickly. Um, we can see uh, there's some events going on. I don't know anything about the internals of the uh, Kubernetes API server, but you can see, um, okay, there's my Raspberry Pi. Uh, there's the Kubernetes cluster name. Um, so we can see we've got traces coming in from an arbitrary source um, and getting into the ops trace instance against this uh, default tenant. Um, so anyway, I guess that's that's kind of it. Um, so those are just some examples of uh, sending data into the system and being able to see it in the UI. Um, again, we're just running a stock Jaeger UI for now. Um, and uh, I guess as far as like things that are left to do, uh, obvious things are, for example, uh, the ClickHouse uh, instance right now is running in unreplicated mode, which means there's basically one pod that all of this data is being stored against. Um, and so uh, Joe Shaw is currently working on setting up replication for that ClickHouse instance so that um, it's a bit less prone to single point of failure issues. Um, I am working on um, setting up some quotas and limits. A lot of these individual components have um, limits around, for example, total throughput of data coming in, the total number of spans that you can store, that sort of thing, so that tenants are not taking up too much of the system, that sort of thing. Um, mostly it's just a matter of exposing those options that already exist. Um, but anyway, it's it's basically at this point, like you can see, we've got an end-to-end -end system that works, and a lot of it at this point is just kind of doing more testing, checking for scale, checking for reliability, that sort of thing. But um, long story short, uh, that's... I don't know. I guess you've seen uh, how it looks end to end at this point. So anyway, that's it for the demo. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to stop by the G underscore observability uh, channel on Slack and um, someone there can can help out. Anyway, nice seeing you. Bye.